Hi, welcome back to my workshop for part 2 of making linear bearing blocks. I would recommend watching part 1 first if you haven't already. Regarding glue on all surfaces I mentioned in the previous video, well it got everywhere anyway. So I had to scrape it off with the blade before putting parts in the vise. I put them in the vise and machined all of them flat on the bottom side first. I scrape glue from one side at the back in order for it to sit properly on the small parallel that was placed at the back of the vise. All the sides were already machined to tolerance and perpendicular to each other, so I only had to place it flat on the parallel to ensure correct dimensions and perpendicularity. I milled about a tenth of a millimeter from aluminum block so the side was clean and plastic was machined flat with the block. I machined all the pieces like that on the one side and turned them around and machined the other side flat as well. I then proceeded with machining them flat on top. Because of the diameter of my face mill, I had to take two passes and took both of them in climb milling direction so that the burr was machined into the material, otherwise I would be left with pretty heavy burr on the outside. This surface was later also the reference surface for finish machining the inside bore since in the final application this surface is bolted to the moving part of the CNC. Before I started boring all the holes I had to make sure that I will be able to slide the bearing onto the rail and ensure that the slit was wide enough. So I milled one bearing block with flat end mill like you see, but for all the others I later made a special fixture for holding them at an angle because the rail supports were tapered. I also wanted to make sure that the back jaw of the vise that I had on the milling machine was perpendicular to the machine's travel. I swiped the indicator up and down and got about two hundredths of a millimeter of misalignment per four centimeters travel. I neglected it, but it hit me hard later. I later had to remachine the bore of all the parts because the misalignment that I measured was doubled for the length of the bearing block which is higher than the vice jaw. The problem was that when I assembled the blocks in the CNC and bolted them to the other parts everything was stuck and did not move, but I machined the bore too tight anyway so it had to be remachined to allow free sliding on the finished assembly. 
I also later found out that the problem was tilting table of the milling machine which was not properly tightened and indicated in. So, lesson learned, never neglect measured errors and try to fix them to your best ability. Before boring, I measured the corner position of device and device stop with edge finder in order to ensure the correct position of the bore in the DRO. The boring head is shop made and I am very satisfied with precision I can get from it. It looks rough on the outside because I did not protect it for, from rust. If you want to know more about boring head, let me know in the comments. I did all the boring with machine position locked in place. The length of the boring bar was adjusted for the highest rigidity so it barely came through the hole. The first pass was quite undersized so I was able to establish the first known diameter of the boring. I then adjusted the head accordingly. The head does not have any graduations, but the screw has fine thread and each turn advances the cutter 0.5 of a millimeter. For precise bore measurements, I used snap gauge with multiple measurements for higher precision. 3 point micrometer would be better, of course, but I don't have it yet. Stefan Gotteswinter made a great video about measuring with snap gauges their repeatability and precision. Link in the description. I also used the dial test indicator for precise advancing of the boring head. I have to mention that such kind of advancing and boring could be problematic in materials like steel or even aluminum because I was taking different depths of cut between first and other parts and even between measurements and tool deflection can add to the error in the next part where full depth of cut is taken in one pass. But since I was working with plastic and the insert was sharp, which minimizes tool pressure, I was on the safe side. After some adjusting and measuring, I was on proper size, took the last pass and took the part out of the vise for test fit. I then finish board all the other parts. I then had to machine the taper at the slot in order to clear the rail supports, but I also had to maintain as much of circumference as possible for rigidity. I laser cut the quick fixture with appropriate angle. The tolerance of the taper is not at all critical, so precision of the laser cutter was good enough. I then machined all parts from one side and then from the other with the same setup.
To finish all the machining, I had to drill and tap the holes at the top for mounting. I used the same coordinate system in the corner of the vise and changed the tool to the carbide spotting drill. I spotted all the holes and then drilled them with 5mm drill on the drill press and then tapped them with M6 tap. To finish all the parts, I thoroughly deburred them and cleaned them from all the oils and chips, rounded all the corners so they were easy to handle. The plastic used should be very resistant to wear, especially on hardened and ground precision shafts. But in case they come loose in the future, during the use on the machine, I have a solution. Currently the bore is finished to the final diameter and there is no adjustment possible, but I can make a slot with a slitting saw here and then tap some holes for the set screws from the side to adjust the tension on the rail. I can then adjust the individual blocks for the good fit and reattach them to the other parts. Of course, it can lead to uneven wear and lower precision of the whole machine, but in that case I can always glue in the fresh plastic and the board the hole to the tolerance again. I also wanted to see the actual fit on the shaft. I set up the test indicator and measured the play. This was not at all the most precise setup, but I got the rough estimation on the precision I can expect from the blocks in current forum without the modifications. There was about 40 microns of play, which is not the best, but is the result of reboring the hole. I will probably do the mentioned modification. That is how the blocks were made. As I said, I could buy appropriate blocks for few hundred bucks, but I decided to put in some effort, learn a lot and make the blocks a lot cheaper. And I was also able to share the project with you guys. I would really appreciate your comments with suggestions and improvements and don't forget that the whole DIY CNC series is coming very soon. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and see you soon. Bye!